Hello and welcome to episode number 87 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm Patricia Steer and you saw him. The camera went to him first. He is up first on the show today. It's Dan Falkenbeck from Buffalo, New York, born and raised, although you've lived elsewhere and uh, broadcasting live for all of us. Hi, how are you? Hello, hello. I'm doing very well. Very, very excited and uh, thankful to be here. I'm, I just want to say first off, uh, Thank you very much for giving me this uh, platform to talk with everyone and uh, yourself included. It's very well, we're, generous. We've been Facebook very friends. Nice oh, no, 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 not at all. I mean, this show is to, uh, it's kind of a meet the flat earther show. Flat earthers, yeah. uh, brand new ones, ones who've been around a long time, people with hardly any subscribers, people with a ton of subscribers, you know, because we're all in this together, whether we like it or not on this flat earth. Yeah. So. And, and you and I yeah. are Facebook friends, so and we've been wanting to do this for a while, and today is the day. Um, I want to know all about you. I don't know where to start first. Uh, one of the things I noticed from watching your videos on the Dan Falkenbach channel and you know, just seeing your, your, your Facebook, you're into a ton of different things. You're multi-textured, multi-layered, and even behind you, there looks like to be all sorts of interesting little things. Tell us about oh, what's yeah. in your back. Oh, okay. Um... Yeah, actually, uh, friends just came out. You can hear me, right? Oh, totally. Yes. Okay. Yeah, friends just came over and uh, just gave me this uh, this painting right here. But literally, like an hour and a half ago. Beautiful. And just for 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 good tidings. And I thought that was nice. Uh, um, yeah, I'm in Buffalo, New York. Um, I uh, just to get out of the way, what I like to, or what I do, I. I bar back, you know, like help the bar bartenders. And, what kind of bar? Uh, and is it is it also in Buffalo? Yeah, it's actually uh, my uh, my dad's the head chef there. It's actually might as well plug the the bar. It's it's a uh, Jack sure. Devine's. Uh, it's called Jack Devine's. It's an Irish pub, and he's the head uh, head chef. And you know, it's a it's a it's a really good place. But uh, um, I bar back there, help out like once every two months. I do that rarely. I. Uh, I plow sometimes in the winter time, make money, and obviously you can't do gardening and, and uh, help help uh, people's uh, lawns in the in the summer and spring or in the, in the winter time. So I do that in the, in the uh, spring and summer. But now, actually, you caught me in like I've been saving this. I didn't tell you this uh, at all. I've been, like you caught me at, at a super exciting time. Um, I'm actually uh, I'm actually leave drive. I've, I've already driven across uh, the country before from uh, Buffalo to, uh, well, I took a couple of stops on the way, but I'm doing it again now. I did it when I was like, I did it when I was 24 years old. I'm 30 now mm -hmm. and I'm doing it again. And, and, I, and I, I left like with like about $1,500-ish and I lost the whole bunch in, in Las Vegas uh, against, <laughs> against my plans. Uh, That's not the wisest I, thing I, to do when you're traveling across no, country to go gambling. No, it is. Well, I want. My plan was to make a solid thousand before I went uh, to to Los Angeles, but I ended up losing like a solid four to six hundred. I can't remember. I was too depressed uh, afterwards. <laughs> but um, so uh, where where was I? Uh, oh yeah. So well, now was, I'm I'm I'm, yeah. I'm just about to exchange my truck. My I just bought my uh, I just bought a new truck off my corrections officer buddy, and uh, and for like five hundred dollars, and and I'm gonna uh, exchange that. For hopefully a Scooby Doo mystery machine, and uh, and then uh, der drive it back across. Uh, well, it's it's not it's not going to be painted that way, but uh, but I'm, it's, it's be a van, you know, down by the river, and so I can have a place to stay. Besides, uh, you know, if I don't feel like staying at motels or hotels, I can sleep in the van down by the river, and uh, and um, <laughs> I, get, I get the reference. Thank you, and. <laughs> and um, and and then I'm gonna make my way back to San Diego, and that's where my uh, one of my best friends uh, is gonna be staying, and I can go back there and relax and pursue other goals uh, when I'm when I'm there. So you should do videos along the way, sort of the Den Falcon Back yeah. Flat Earth Tour 2016, I, whatever year. I am, you're and, in right and now. I'll challenge and I'll challenge anyone who's watching right now to. Uh, to 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 think of an experiment uh, or any experiment from. Uh, measuring from New York to California, because you know there are railroad tracks that go along the way. But if you if you believe in the globe, the, the rail, rail railroad tracks are curved. Railroads go up, up, and then down. That's interesting. I didn't know uh, uh, 
they know uh, railroads in, in, in this country go. Did you ever go on a railroad that went up and down, Patricia? No, unless it was on yeah. a bridge and then it was a slow, uh, uh, slow yeah. step up. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Weird. Well, so you're doing this uh, big adventure in your life. Yeah, and so you, used to live, thing, yeah. you used to live in California, I think, Los yeah. Angeles area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to. Oh, God, that's a whole story. I used to be, uh, I, I, I kind of like, uh, um, well, my brother uh, passed away when, um, when I was 22 years old and uh, he was 26 years old. And, uh, you know, he got hit by, yeah, yeah, well, it was awful. He got hit by uh, a semi uh, drunk driver, not drunk enough to get in trouble, just a little slap on the wrist for the fella. Uh, under underage drinker, but uh, not, nothing, nothing, ha nothing wrong uh, with, with that. Nothing happens to him. He just get, get just just a little slap on the wrist. I'm not even gonna. Uh, I don't like feel uh, the feelings that my father feels towards that fella. But uh, it's just like, yeah, it definitely sucked. And and so I was like pretty much depressed for uh, you know solid almost two years, and and, uh, and so I. I was a stagnant for like uh, for a year, twenty two to twenty two to twenty three years old, and then my brother actually taught at the Stan uh, Stanley G. Falk School, and it's called the Stanley G. Falk School, and it's spelled the same exact way as my last name. And he was teaching uh, phys physical education, and actually he eventually did uh, graduate college, and um, uh, he became a, a teacher, uh, um, a, a gym teacher, phys physical education, and so and then. So, so I, I ended up uh, going to the school uh, and teaching. It's like a school for bad kids, like kids from kindergarten to all the way up to people who can vote, like 18-year-olds. And mm. so I, I, I went in there, and I've never been to college before, but I'm, I don't know, I guess I, I'm well-read and articulate enough to make sense. And I have a little uh, nose congestion right now. That's why I'm a little... Uh, you uh, sound fine. Don't stuffy. worry about it. Um, but, yeah, so I... I ended up teaching at the Stanley G. Falk School for about a year and a half till I was about like 24 ish. And then I just like, I made, I've been, oh, I was writing a book uh, it's, and I'm still in the process of writing this book. And it's all like, now it's just getting like really metaphysical. The whole thing is turning into literally what I wrote about those. I started it and I should have, should have, actually, it's, it's right, it's right here, but it, it all, make it all ties into like right now like all the people all, all my life and the people that i'm talking to i, I predicted it in 2008 in 2007 actually and, and and the whole book was about writing a story about about a fictional character and then that was me so i was writing a story about the fictional character and then in halfway in the story there's three parts there's unit one the past unit two the present and unit three the future and then in the past, I describe the past, and then the present I'm describing now, and uh, and in the future I'm just about to write. I haven't r written it because I've written the past and the present, and so now uh, when I was writing it, I was in the past. Now I'm in the present, and I'm I'm, I'm writing it. And I know I know I know it's uh, getting convoluted, but but right now it's literally. I'm going back and I'm reading it right now, and it, and I and it, it, everything I said is true. It's it's. I became the main character of the of the story halfway in between. So wow. it was it was a fictional story it, when I was writing it because it was fictional. But now I predicted it would become real, a, a non-fictional uh, halfway in between, which was the present, and that's now. And it is. And it even says I would. I don't want to say the the, the number, uh, but it's I would save up a certain amount of money, and I'm like dead on with the money in in the book. I just I just I just read it. I'm like now. I'm, I'm driving across again, but it's the second time. I've already did it. I didn't think I would already do it, but I've already done it. I fucked up. I failed, and now I have to go do it again. Did you, when you were writing that in the past about the present, which is now, I think I'm following you. I think we're yeah. following you here. Yep. Did Flat Earth come into the story? No. Oh, no. Actually, oh, darn. that would have been really cool. Oh, no, uh, actually, that it's 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 interesting because I. I the reason I'm like procrastinating and delaying it so much is because it's 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 about 50 pages so far, mm -hmm. and I have to go and rewrite all of it because and re-edit all of it because I'm because I, I I'm making I'm making fun of it. I you can tell that I was making fun of the heliocentric model. It's in 2007 and 2008 I was I was making fun of 
oh, people think that there's a something called a Big Bang and we exploded out of nothing and uh, and where are we going? No one knows where, where no one knows where we're going or where we're headed. But that's we're, there's black holes around and no one what this is. And I was like, what the fuck? And I'm writing that in the past. What? I don't know. But I, but I was saying I was admitting that I don't know. But now I'm writing, and I'm like, God, I'm like, it's just so it's embar it's embarrassing. So, when so did I, when did flat Earth come into your life and how how did you make this? Uh, how did you come to the realization? I love finding out how people figured it out. Oh, it's well. As you and a lot of other people uh, know, when you do, uh, you're, you, I know you're a conspiracy researcher, conspiracy yeah. hunter. Well, you're yourself. a Facebook friend, so you see stuff I post. So yeah. Well, yeah. Um, well, we. That's interesting because I like to check when we do, did become friends, because maybe it's in the past. That's really the future. That's really. Forget <laughs> <it>. <laughs> um, but I. I I stumbled across uh, Boyland and Dubay's stuff and and the Flat Earth Clues. Mm -hmm. That th those were the uh, three first things. But I've 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 been studying like I've been trying to like oh I have to understand physics if I'm going to try to make fun of these people sci scientists and shit. I have to so like I started six five five years ago really like okay what's the What's the fundamentals of this crap? They're talking about all, all this uh, weak force and strong force, and the for it's like okay, you gotta you have to learn their stuff, and then so that's what I was using for so long, and that's why I'm like, I remember uh, talking in San Diego, 2009 ish, with uh, two two other men, and and, I, and we're all debating, and I'm like, what do you? I'm like, so if you guys believe in gravity, that means that people are on the opposite side of the Earth right now, and they're standing that way. I'm like, and I go, what about, uh, I go, this is in 2009. I go, what about the moon? I go, the moon is one-sixth the, gra uh, the gravity of Earth. That means that gravity is different than it is here. Well, well gravity is relative. It, it, what, what do you, see? Like, you've never been, you've never been to the moon. I, this is in 2009. I'm saying, uh, I, I've, I've never been there. You've never been there. How, how do you know it's relative? Shut the fuck, sorry. You, don't, you know, it's like, shut, <laughs> shut up. You're just making crap up. Stop parroting gibberish yeah i think that parroting is a big reason that we all got here and it's not really our fault that's what our parents told us that's what the school system told us and now for once we're thinking on our own and some brilliant minds are coming up with some great ideas they may or may not be true time will tell or maybe we'll never know like crow triple seven just put out a video i believe yesterday if not the day before today being the uh, 14th of april 2016 uh, about the moon being behind water or yeah. something watery could be plasma we don't really yeah. know that's the way the stars why the stars in the p900 cameras look shimmery and like almost yeah. like amoeba like uh really a fascinating thought and it's funny because crow triple seven is the one who filmed the lunar wave note the word wave if yeah. indeed he's correct wave water he's been on the right path all this time and just didn't really even know it but just another fascinating thing to talk about and uh I don't know. What just, do you think about just, all of this? I just saw that video. Uh, yeah. And I've heard that before because of the Bible's model. Yes. With mm -hmm. The waters above. Waters above, right. Waters below. Was, I also got my confirmation and, uh, or, or my, I got, I graduated from my confirmation and, and, or my communion and then confirmation in, in Catholicism, by the way, just to let you know. Oh, so, interesting. So, so I have every right to make fun of it. <laughs> well, you're also part of the, uh, the St. Zachary Church people. of Sub genius of oh, the, the sub genius oh the church of the sub genius yep. yes and right behind you uh we've uh -oh. got jr bob in quotes dobbs yep. pictures old jr bob dobbs there yeah talk a little while you're showing that because it won't flip oh. the camera until you're talking oh, oh jr bob dobbs uh it's just actually explain um, the church of the sub genius because like people I know, but it's people, hard to explain to people. It's I've really tried, hard and to, I've to, tried to it, investigate it, and you know way more than I do. So, isn't it, isn't it hilarious trying it, in trying to investigate the Church of the Subgenius is a lot like trying to investigate the flat Earth. You're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> exactly. Is this serious? Uh, yeah, it's pretty freaking serious. They have a actual foundation, and and they have subsidies un underneath it. So, like, just in case like legalities get involved, we have actual uh, re like. The, the Church of the Subgenius is a real religion, but it's a for-profit organization, meaning it's for you profit. We 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 admit to uh, uh, you know 
taking people's money and, and that's how we make money. But also, we, we want you to be wealthy. We want the members to, to be uh, wealthy. We don't want, uh, you know, poor sub, sub, sub genii. Uh, just, hey, look at that, look at that guy. Like, oh, that's a, that's a good representative right there. So what's it all about? I mean, what's the purpose? When someone uses the word church, then you would naturally think worship. And I've seen different images of the Church of the Subgenius, and sometimes they have some like creepy satanic stuff, but it looks like it's all in humor or all in good fun, that it's not really involving those things. It's almost making fun of the Illuminati oh, okay. and the Satanism. Oh, okay. But maybe well, I'm wrong, so fill well, us the in. Whole, the whole thing is that it's we've taken everything from the um, Christianity, all the best things and all the best things from uh, Scientology and combined it and all the other uh, religions in the world combined it into one and, and then added all of our own stuff. Uh, I'm not, 50% I, I, or less go public. You know, the, I, now that we're talking about it, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll name a list of, of, uh, of people who actually are famous uh, subgeniuses, Hunter S. Thompson. It totally you know, makes sense that Hunter S. Thompson would be a member of this thing that I'm unable to explain. That maybe <laughs> you're even unable to explain. Do you know the band Her, Devo? Devo, yes, of course. I mean, I, I, I they support. They support uh, and probably are members themselves. Yes, I would uh, imagine. Uh, Brad Noel of Sublime. He's a uh, he. he uh, oh, okay, he's, he's I know the member. band Sublime. Yes. Keith Richards. Uh, Interesting. Bert, makes sense. Bert, Burt Reynolds, Elvis Costello. Elvis Stephen Costello King, makes sense, Mick, totally. Mick Jagger, uh, Robert Anton Wilson. And Robert Anton Wilson is, is, is probably the main reason I, I, uh, I, I've known about the Subgenius, uh, Church of the Subgenius for years, but I've never been a member until this past year. And because uh, I never like, I was just like, what the hell is this crap? And it, like, he, but, but it, and I'm going to get more into it. Uh, let's see here. Pee Wee Herman. I, he, but, P. Wee Herman uh, is a, is a, he owes us $10, though. Um, oh, darn. We better, you better yeah, it's all, contact it's all, <laughs> it's all it takes is like 30 bucks, 30, 35 bucks, and you can get, you, you get a, a cool little packet in the mail, and, and the, you'll get your official membership. You can, like, marry people if you, go, if you, uh, if you um, register in the Universal, Universal Ch Church of Light, I think it's called. You know, I believe, though I may be Universal mistaken. Life, well, Universal Life Church. My brother was married by somebody who was part of the subgenius awesome. family, uh, the Universal Life Church, and he had his wedding on Halloween, and everyone dressed in costume. Yeah, how about that? So it was really a fun wedding, and it was held in New Orleans. Unfortunately, he divorced the woman uh, later, or they oh, divorced. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a that's a good thing because uh, we uh, subgeniuses expect that, and so we do quick marriages and quick divorces without yeah. getting the lawyers involved. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much like that. It was all everybody was happy afterwards. So after the uh, divorce went went down, but yeah, that's weird. Um, I remember the guy performing, and he came from LA to my brother's wedding in New Orleans. And uh, anyway, um, yeah, I've always heard about the Church of the Subgenius, but on a peripheral level. Like some of us heard about the flat Earth, but then never looked at it. You'd see a video come up, and you'd be like, "Whoa, what's that?" You'd, and you can't even remember too. saying "uh" and skipping over it because it just happens. And then one day you click, and then you're a flat earther. But go ahead with you'd be surprised about what. About oh, you'd the be surprised. Church. There's fifty percent of, uh, or or a little bit less, are, are uh, of the church. Are, uh, the members are flat earthers. It's pretty interesting. Oh wow! It's very interesting actually because if you look at the artwork in their in the in the Bible, because there's there's at least, there's a, a, about three Bibles that they have of the the word of Bob, praise Bob. Um, they uh, the very first page is actually it shows a flat platform. I mean, I I could show it if you if you want to see it. It shows like the Earth on a flat platform. But hmm. but to 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 finish off the the here's here's some non card carrying members. Those the, the ones I listed were official card carrying members. Non card carrying members include Tim Leary, Frank Zappa, Howard Stern, Tori Amos, uh, William Burroughs, um, Letterman, Dave Letterman. Oh, Elvira. The, wow. Uh, and uh, Steve Jackson, even though I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is either. It's probably with that kind of a name. It sounds like 15 different people. Yeah. Oh, Steve yeah. Jackson. I know him. Yeah, um, he lives near me. Oh, <laughs> down oh, the hall. And Penn of Penn, and Pel, Penn, of Penn and Teller is, is also. Uh, all right. So those uh, of us in the Flat Earth who yeah. are 
understanding of this or thinking, okay, this sounds kind of neat and kind of interesting. And there are other people because there's a, a large Christian community who will say, oh, this is bad. This is satanic. This is when you say yeah. praise Bob, this is replacing Jesus or the creator or God, whatever you would like to. And so can you speak as if you're speaking to them and explain to them what this is and what it isn't so that we're all clear because I'm really not clear oh, okay. on what it is really. Oh, I got you. Oh, totally. Yeah. I totally got you. Uh, yeah. Um, well, here's the thing. Those churches, uh, Christianity and Catholicism and the, like the rest of them, they, they take all, of, they don't pay any taxes. If you sold the church of Catholicism by itself, uh, the Vatican, I mean, you you could pay for the world over and with food and shelter. Yeah, uh, that's that's with that's by them by themselves. That's um, and so they and they and they they don't pay any taxes. They steal our taxes. So they don't pay any taxes, but they steal our taxes and they sit on gold thrones and they tell us to be humble. So that that's when I go okay. And I was also I've also like I said been went to, to religion class for years and years and years, got my confirmation. I was the kid getting ki kicked out of uh, religion class in, in the pews because I was laughing at everything. I'm like, what the heck is this? What are all these people? I, uh, it's just like, what the fuck? What are these people do? It's, it's very strange. And, and so you get out of it. And uh, to address those people, oh, here's the thing. We admit... All we want to do is empower you. We all we want to do is say, get your. There's, there's, there's one. There's, there's three things you need to know. Uh, get your slack back. The conspiracy is involved, and Bob can help you. All right. So Bob is who's pictured behind you with the pipe. That is J.R. Bob in quotes. Dobbs. All right. Slack. I is something that it seems to represent money or time. Explain That's, what Slack is. Slack is indefinable. It can't. Mm -hmm. It's indescribable. But it, it can be. It can. I can. I can do my best. Slack is what you said. It's money, power, success, fame, uh, all in one. And people are like, "Oh man, that's like pretty." Ter well, it's pretty terrible if you're if you're uh, a Ted Cruz or some somebody like that. Who actually is on camera saying, "Oh, what? What would you like to do if you became president? Oh, I'd like to take over the world." Uh, so, um, we admit to being a for-profit organization, and it's a for you. It's we, and and it's strange. Like, what has being abstinent? Uh, I'm not going to have sex. I'm. Um, I'm going to be abstinent, celibate. Uh, I'm going to not sin. It's just like all all this stuff has been advocated, pushed in prayer. I'm going to pray for you. What's his face? Um, 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 who's the who's the black comedian? Who Hannibal Burris? Um, Hannibal Burris said uh, he's like prayer. He's he goes. People tell me they're going to pray for me. It's like, wouldn't you do something useful, like make me a sandwich? At least you're doing doing something. At least you you're doing something. You're actually make, doing something useful. Making prayers haven't helped. We this world's been, uh, been consciously aware of itself for a, a good two thousand years now, at least. And all these prayers ha haven't amounted to anything. So how about we start being a little more skeptical, a little more doubtful. Um, And go forward that way. Okay, I get kind yeah. of what it is. I get kind of what it is. I wanted to talk about it because I've not heard anybody in the Flat Earth community talk about uh, this before. So yeah. I thought, uh, but you did say there are a number of Flat Earthers who are involved in this. Yeah. And it's a combination between Christianity, Christianity and Scientology. And a lot of people are either Christian or Scientologist or are afraid of either one of those. So putting them together is pretty much crazy. <laughs> and Slack, you described it as being many, many different things. It sounds like it's a form of gravity almost, but Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, it's interesting. They, talk, they, they even talk about gravity. They make fun of gravity. They, they subgeniuses say they eat black holes for breakfast. And, and uh, um, the, they they are they are they do talk about t something called time control a lot time control 
and 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 at the same time, like while this is very par uh, parody and satirical, while reading it, like I, I was reading the 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 Bible. By the way, I I I agree or disagree with about forty to sixty percent of everything that they say. Like I'm reading it, and I'm like, wow. I'm like, there. It's 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 everything that I'm reading now is is contradict. Everything that I'm reading and listening to is contradictory. Some people tell me to meditate. Other other people tell me to stop meditating. It's evil. Some people tell me to uh, um, see. It's just it's, it's true. What are you gonna? So I'm hmm. almost like I'm done. I give up. I'm not. I a couple of weeks ago I'm done giving up your little medit. My your I've been on the year years of meditating. I'm just gonna sit. Well, how do you meditate? I, I don't have Russell Brand's money where I can fucking uh, pay per per for lessons of Parahamana Yarsha uh, yogi lessons and breathe with these masters for that have been practicing it for twenty or thirty years. I don't have that uh, that type of uh, accessibility. If maybe if they I can do that I'd like to learn it but I, and I I I've, I've been trying to control my breathing for years my it took me 20 minutes to get my breathing under control when I first started uh, this uh, the podcast with with you it's <laughs> it's, it, it's not like uh, co completely out of control but my adrenaline is rushing and it's like it's exciting and um, uh, the breathing yeah it's just like I'm, I can barely. When I was at Esalen, I could barely get my breathing under control. Literally, we need to I, talk about Esalen. Please tell us a little bit about your experience with that. Esalen is is a whole is a whole. The reason I I went to Esalen is because of Terrence McKenna and Robert Anton Wilson, and like I just listed off a whole bunch of famous or non-famous uh, uh, sub genii, uh, like Alan Watts, Terrence McKenna, Robert Anton Wilson, Tim Leary, Ram Das. Uh, Rupert Sheldrake, I, I, can, I can, and so on and so far. I, I see you posting uh, quotes and, and videos pertaining to them on Facebook quite often, so I kind of yeah. know where your your influences come from, who all, you respect, and yeah, yeah. all R William Burroughs. He actually went to. Uh, the, they all chilled and and uh, studied at Esalen, different, uh, and mo probably lived there. Well, did live there and uh, taught there, taught workshops there. For those who don't know, where is it and what is it? It could be just a word to some people who've never heard about it before. Yeah, the Esalen Institute. Institute, yeah. Talk when you hold the book up, otherwise oh, the camera won't flip the, to the you. The Esalen Institute is, uh, uh, is, is from the Esalen, uh, it's the Esalen Indians. They're five, it's a 5,000 year old land. And uh, because 5,000 years ago, there were Esalen Indians living on that land. It's on the, like the side of a cliff. There's like mountains above it and like the Pacific Ocean r right there. It's all flat. You've seen those, my, my pictures in the background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, see, when I was there, I was just mesmerized. I'm just, I literally was looking at the flat Pacific Ocean and I'm like, I made it. And I t tears strolled down my face. I'm like, this is. Oh, that's it, beautiful. The, the whole, the, the weird part is that I went there because. It's conspiracy ridden. The Esalen Institute itself? Oh yeah. Explain how. Well, if you do any research on it, just like uh, if you do any research on the uh, Church of the Subgenius, uh, the Church of the Subgenius has links to the Peter Jackson. Uh, Peter Jackson's. Um, oh, is that maybe that's who? Uh, um, um, the Illuminati card game. Mm -hmm. You see all those. Uh, the, the NASA card, the Flat Earther card. Yes, of course. All the, and the uh, Flat all... Earth is square, by the way. It's not the round AE map on the card, no, it's, anyway. It's a square. It's a, it's a yeah. square, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the edges. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so they try to make it funny, uh, try to make fun of us. But in, in, even in the description, they say that, too. It says, but they, but, but these Flat Earthers are onto something. Yeah, they know something. <laughs> um, so... It's interesting. It's 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 that it's, it has a and that and that game is riddled with uh, subgenius uh, propaganda too, and it's making fun of the church and it's calling them sat satanists and stuff too. Yeah, the the Illuminati card game and the whole subgenius thing they have a similar feel to that. Yeah, Isn't that interesting? even the way they look and the art and yes. Mm -hmm. So Robert Anton Wilson, I I think is the one. It, he's I'd say he's. 50% the reason why the Church of the Subgenius exists. I'd say, it, I, I think that he invented the, the religion with, with the help of uh, the other co-founders. Uh, 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 uh. So he, yeah, he spent the, the, the later half, of the, the late half of his life in inventing religions rather than studying them. And, and uh, 
And so um, I went to Esalon because Robert Anton Wilson, like I said, Terrence McKenna and Alan Wansa uh, went there. And uh, so I, I wanted to go there myself and see what the heck it's all about. And, and I did research uh, on the Esalon Institute prior mm -hmm. and it was just completely conspiracy ridden. Actually, if you could just simply type in uh, Esalon Institute uh, on Google and type in MK Ultra. There, there's links that, that say that Esalen Institute is the headquarters of the CIA uh, mind control. Wow, interesting. Well, uh, it's in Big Sur, California, and when you were saying that tears yep. were running down your face when you saw it, it's such a beautiful area that regardless <laughs> yes. of your beliefs, if when you see that, that's, that's the oh, feeling God, that yes. anybody would have. You feel so... I love California. I lived in Northern and Southern California in my past for periods of time, so I know it and love it. Beautiful. Um, so, conspiracy definitely is something that that you were interested in and you got involved in Esalen because of the conspiracy aspect. Did you go because some of your heroes who we've already mentioned had been there yeah. as well as because you wanted to yep. in increase your personal knowledge about it, some of these secret things? Exactly. And, and it's so, Oh man, there's so many like th things that, that you just triggered. There's so many, but, like the first day I was there, I came too early and, and I, I was supposed to stay there for about a week and it cost, you can't even just go, you can't even just go in and visit. Like you can't just be a driver on the what is it? The the one or the ten or the one hundred one or uh, uh, the, the ten, I think. The, the Route Five or something like that. Um, Interstate Eight. <laughs> and um, you can't just go off the road and go because it says Esalen Institute. You can't just go and go. Oh, hey, honey, uh, let's go check it out. And you can't, <laughs> you can't you can't do that. You have to 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 to, to hold a re or call and make a reservation. Right. Can, it's can work you study. Go? You stay there. You work. Exactly. And you learn. Yes, and you heal. More importantly, mm. and uh, I healed more than I learned. <laughs> Although I learned a lot, I I, I went there uh, for a week. It was called experiencing Esalen's farm farm and garden. And that's why gardening, like you mentioned before, is a part of your life. Now, did you do this after your brother's horrible, tragic death? Is that what, what you went to heal there from, or just the regular pain of life that we all kind of feel? Oh, gosh. Well, I already had my, uh, I already did um, a, a landscaping, I already have a landscaping degree, a two-year, well, not a degree, a certificate. And uh, so it kind of gives me, and I, and I want to become vegan like you uh, eventually, I, I was a vegetarian at one point, but right now I'm just, I, I just, I don't eat any fast food or, um, the only pops I drink are in alcoholic beverages <laughs> and, uh, and I, I, I don't eat any fast food. Like I said, uh, I only eat like Himalayan salt and I don't use any like, um, I don't know what's it called. Uh, I can't help the, um, you know, restaurants you go to. You, I don't know like it's what hard steaks, when you go to restaurants. Uh, I know. But uh, I do only eat organic fruit and vegetables. Like my mom That's good. and dad are so. Un my dad's a chef and he doesn't even. Yeah. It's like, dude, you don't even fucking. Ugh, it's embarrassing. Well, I know people who uh, are chefs and who in, in really beautiful restaurants and most of them eat. They don't even eat the nice food they prepare. They kind of eat junk food, cereal and fast food. Bread, um, white, white yeah, bread. Yeah, a lot of bread. <laughs> I find it weird, you, you you know, but whatever. I don't understand what it's like to be a chef. It's almost like people think it's a wonderful, glamorous job. It is if you're a TV chef, but if you're just yeah, a regular exactly. person, even at an expensive restaurant, you're at, there at night, super long hours. It's hot. Mm -hmm. You're yelling, even if you're a nice person. Yep. People with huge high stress level and you're eating like on the run and you're grabbing the oh, white God, bread yeah. and throwing some cheese mm, on it and eating a sandwich. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Um, even if there's salads and such there, you just, it's hard to explain what goes through a chef's mind when they're, they're dealing with their, and that's not everyone. There's these organic chefs, there's these vegan chefs, but we're talking about the average chef in a restaurant, be it upscale or downscale. Yeah. They just grab and go with what they eat. And a lot of times they're eating not so good stuff. So, oh God, no. Yeah. yeah. But oh, at yeah, least your mom intro you to, you know, the whole organic stuff. So that's good. Oh God, no! My mom, uh, <laughs> no. Well, you said my organic mom, fruits and vegetables in your mom, so. No, no, she, uh, she, like my mom, she, uh, like last year, she didn't really, she didn't really support it, but now she actually does. Like she, she'll cook. Um, she'll own. She'll own. She knows I don't eat tortured meats. Like I don't. Mm. I won't. I won't buy regular. I don't. I won't eat her meals if she gets. If she just makes regular beef and chicken it has to be farm farm green uh, like on a pasture it ha these animals have to have names 
I don't want to, uh, it makes me feel horrible. Uh, so I, 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 the only way I can eat a good meal and not feel bad about myself is if these animals are at least it says, I, and I, and I know there's people on chat, this idiot, he thinks that all, uh, it says organic and these are all, well, you got to do something to make yourself feel better. It's, it's stages. It's different stages. I, I was, uh, just a regular meat eater. And then I found meat is murder album by the Smiths a long time ago and yeah. started thinking about it and became vegetarian and then eventually came to veganism. It's steps. There are very few people who are born into that lifestyle where it's second yeah. nature, where they don't have to, you know, resist mom's home cooked fill in the blank yeah. and et cetera. Um, and we live in this world where it's really hard to stay pure and true to anything that you believe in, be it religion, be it a way of a lifestyle of, of how you eat or even an exercise regime, because there's so many temptations in the world when it comes to food, when it comes to just sitting on the couch and watching some stupid TV show. Um, and if, unless you've got a belief system, now a belief system solves all that. If you've got a belief system about veganism, you won't want to eat any of those things because you see them as being torture. Uh, if you have a belief system of being Catholic or Christian or hey, subgenius, whatever it may be, uh, that belief system will guide you uh, to stay on track. No, I don't, I don't will, have yeah. any belief systems. Right, exactly. So, yeah. And, and having no belief systems is probably also quite a very freeing thing. I don't know. I have a couple belief systems, but they're ones I'm okay with. So the, yeah. the, 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 uh, That's what uh, Terrence McKenna and Robert R. Anton Wilson always said that. they always. If there's one thing I'll completely, I, I'll copy anything from those people. I don't give a crap. Uh, um, but I, I'll always give, I'll always quote, like I quoted Hannibal, Hannibal Bur Burris earlier, and like I'm about to say now, Robert Anton Wilson and Terrence McKenna always say, never believe in anyone else's uh, belief system. They're mm. BS. Mm. Well, I've got the flat earth as my belief system and veganism and the rest of the belief systems that's, of the world. Yeah, that's as far as I'll go, is the, is the, the flat earth is as far as I'll go. And I don't even like to say theory anymore. I know, uh, I know Santos Benanci doesn't want to say, uh, stop saying well pretty much uh stop saying theory because it's just like this thing isn't a theory anymore this is something that was around when i was when i was well i wasn't i wasn't born and it, it was flat yes it's, it's gonna yeah, be it's, this that's is, how it is this is how it is we don't know exactly to what extent any of it is is or how it looks or whatever but um we know it's we know it's flat we know it's not a ball so that's a better way to believe that's just the thing right. that's, that's yeah. just that's that's just that that's just common sense the thing about saying theory is that, yes, I guess the people who believe that we live on a globe would call it a theory. That oh, would God, be yeah. kind of them to call it a theory. Usually they just call it the thing you stupid morons believe in. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, they don't I even think, know their own freaking theories. Yeah, they don't. And that's true. I learned more about the globe theory after becoming a flat, not the globe. Well, it is a theory. <laughs> I learned more about the globe standard system when I became a flat earther Me than too. I ever knew when I thought I lived on a globe. What are you Me drinking, too. by the way? A, uh, a very uh, uh, n um, not powerful screwdriver, a very light screwdriver. Kind of to chill you out a little bit? Yeah, it definitely. Being very is. animated and full of, you know. Definitely cool. I'm trying to be more uh, friendly towards people. I was very her uh, hermetic and uh, antisocial. And really? The whole, the whole, like when I'm reading the book of the subgenes, it, 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 it wants to instill greed and lust and. Um, so these are things I'm reading this. I'm like, holy crap. I'm like, they really do. Oh, see, the whole thing is, is that it gives you an excuse not to feel guilty about things. Because everything tries to make you feel guilty of what the original sin. So you were born a piece of shit, a, a, a lying, devilish sinner, right? That's, well, that, if you, that's what no, people say. Some exactly. People believe it. No, that, that, that's what I just laugh at because that's just completely. No, I believe uh, that's mal impossible. Mal that's malarkey. A sweet little baby born just this very second somewhere in yeah, the world let's, is, let's is go a ahead and horrible cut his creature. Fucking penis off. Right. Let's go ahead exactly. and cut this, the tip of his penis off. The thing about all of that is, is that everyone's born, in my opinion, pure, and then we, society goes about tarnishing that purity, little well, by little exactly. by little. Exactly. That's actually mm -hmm. the that's the whole function of sc uh, school, colleges, and universities is to destroy your individuality. Mm. <laughs> so you like Terrence McKenna. You must like things like expanding your mind with. Oh uh, well, substances. yeah, I love. Uh, <laughs> oh okay, well yeah, I loved. Uh, I, I I yeah, well I haven't done. Um, I'm not a u user. I, I mm -hmm. don't. 
I don't even, I love to talk about, I love to talk about it, but, it, and I actually, I am going to make some videos, um, after, after we get done talking, I'm going to talk about my psilocybin experiences, mm -hmm. magic, AKA the uh, Mario magic mushroom. Mm -hmm. Well, actually the Mario magic mushroom is a, um, Strafaria cubensis. That's the, that's the species of that one's called. But the regular golden caps one uh, that probably most of the people in the chat rooms have eaten before, those are uh, psilocybin cubensis. All right. So if you were going to do one, which is the best one to do? Uh, oh, only God. You want to stay away from uh, Stafaria cubensis, the magic Mario mushroom, unless you're chilling with some uh, Amazon Amazonians. <laughs> okay. um, or no, no. Where is that? Siberians. Siberians. That's where that's oh, where okay. uh, well, actually, yeah, that's the see the the Siberian uh, magic mushroom uh, is red and it's red and white, you know, just like the, mm -hmm. the, and what are Santa's colors? Alice in Wonderland, red and white, the Santa, mushrooms. And so Santa, Sa mm -hmm. Santa Claus is shaman Claus, he, and, he, and he and he and he goes from village to village with a sack of mushrooms that he he picks up and he fills his sack with mushrooms along the way. And guess where he picks them out of the the evergreen tree that that they grow underneath. Wow, interesting. Yeah, so so the mushrooms grow underneath the the evergreen tree in the morning and the dew, and that is the the present, the flesh, the present of the gods, and and, uh, and so if you take it, that's where you meet the elf creatures. And uh, <laughs> I wonder if they could also be the mana from heaven. Many people have oh, theories it, about that. Yeah, it, it is. It it is uh, that uh, what's it called the uh, soma that the. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard about that? Yes, I have. But, you know, I've heard many theories of, as to what it could be. The Soma was apparently, actually, that's another, the whole theory is uh, Jesus and his apostles were a mushroom cult and Jesus was yeah. the mushroom leader. Yeah, I've heard that as well. And people <laughs> accessed higher divine aspects of themselves by using Before substances. miracles. You're yeah. Before, you're going to walk on water when you're uh, tripping yeah. balls with your group of friends. And <laughs> so you've done only one of those mushrooms, the traditional normal one, the regular yeah, psilocybin. I'm pretty, yeah, pretty sure I've only done the uh, you, psilocybin. I like how you message. say you're pretty sure because you don't really remember. <laughs> well, it's been, I, I, uh, it's been about three, maybe even four years since I've, uh, since I've done, um, since, I've, since mushrooms have taken me for a spin. And, but, uh, but I, uh, I've, I've, I've done a uh, DMT a half a dozen times in the past. Uh, I haven't done that in two or two and a half years, but before that, the, a year and a half or two years before that, I, I, I experimented with it usually by myself. Yeah. Pretty much always by my, Oh no, no, no. The very first time ever I did it, I was with uh, two other people. But then the next five or six times after that, I just, I did it by myself and I did it the way Terrence McKenna prescribed. All right. So when you did mushrooms, you ate them dry, or was there a tea? Did you do it? Oh, tea? oh. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can do it. Um, you don't want to do it. Um, you want to have like what Tim Leary called set, setting, and do dosage. So you want to weigh your dose always to make sure you, you're doing the proper amount, and uh, you want to get your setting correct, uh, bulletproof everything, and. Uh, and make sure you're not with a whole bunch of crazy, chaotic people. Oh, in a, makes at a, sense. In a, at a par party. I, yeah, let's just take them in a party atmosphere. I don't know why I had a bad trip. Uh, right. And I'm like five hours away from home. and Yeah. You know. Drive home. Yeah. No. <laughs> so you just make sure you just do the set setting and dosage and set your intent. All right. So doing, when you've done it, you for those who haven't done it before, uh, what was your experience and have you ever, well, I guess oh, I was going to ask you if you've ever done any of these things with the knowledge of flat earth in your mind, no, because that's, that's, that's why been, what I, I want know. to hear from people who've done ayahuasca, mm -hmm. mushrooms, whatever, DMT. That's what I'm preparing, that's what I'm right. preparing for. Yeah. I, I've been. The flat earth mindset. Yeah. I've been, I've been uh, digesting and absorbing flat earth knowledge for e e over two years now. Oh, really? uh, like, two years. like, like, like you said, it was, it was right before, honestly, I, I remember, I think you became a flat earther in March. Well, no, March is when I became one, but I didn't start doing videos till August. Okay, exactly. But yeah. I was posting on my Facebook, you know, right away, but testing yep. the waters with little posts yep. because I was scared and didn't, and people were defriending me and making yeah, crazy yeah. comments. You know how I we all know I didn't, this. Yeah, I didn't bring it, I didn't bring it, uh, the, the, the avalanche until, uh, 
like a six months to a year into it. But um, yeah, I, it was around, uh, it was actually, it was, it was almost to the date, like right now, like uh, two years, two years ago. Yeah. Oh, two years ago. Yeah. Well, interesting. Yeah. Right about, um, right about now-ish. Hmm. And so by, are you, so you said you're preparing to do some kind of, you know, altering the way you're you know, altering yourself chemically, let's say, with something soon. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not going around looking for it. That's not something I go around looking. Well, for. no, it'll anything in life will when the time is right. <laughs> yeah, will appear, it finds, I think it finds you. Like you can't honestly describe a DMT. Go to YouTube and, and type in Terrence McKenna DMT. Have and smoke a bowl and and have have yourself a a, a good time and listen. I've never to, done. DMT. I'm not afraid of just, it or anything. I've never just done listen. It. Just listen to, uh, just listen to Terrence McKenna. They're, they're five to ten minutes to twenty minutes to an hour long uh, clips or le lectures, and and just listening to him describe it, it's incredible. And, yeah, I've uh, listened and, to those things definitely. Okay, but, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, now, what about? Oh, sorry, I was going to ask you what about ayahuasca, but before you answer that question, go with what you were just going to say about Terrence yeah. McKenna. See, oh man, I now I, now I have like two or three uh, thoughts, thoughts that are, are on, <laughs> that are trying to connect with with one another. Uh, now, oh man, DMT you, when you did DMT, maybe okay, that's okay. See, that's the whole point. Yeah. See, see when, oh, man, when you're trying to talk about these things and uh, explain them to people, it's really really hard because. Um, Everyone is going to have a different experience. You're going to have a diff different experience than, than I am. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the weird part is, is that you're conscious. You're, you're conscious of yourself doing it. You don't just, like, I, I, I was just laying in my bed right there, and you have just, th you're, you're three tokes away to what would be called a mystical experience. And you take the two rips, and most people think that's enough because they're already in a different dimension at the second rip. And if you can get your bearings straight and somehow, climb out of the lava pit that you've stumbled uh, in, into and and take the third rip then all of a sudden you're there you're, there's entities all around you there's energy electric your body you look at your blood you look at your arms and you see your veins are full of electricity streaming through with white light and and and, and, and he, okay now i remember all my thoughts but uh in, uh, researching the Church of the Subgenius is frightening. Frightening. It's it's it is honestly it's confusing and frightening. And then at the same time, it's like, oh, okay, I don't I don't have to I don't have to uh, be in, so invested into it. It's not such a thing. Uh, researching the flat Earth, it's frightening because it's it's well, it's I'm not going to pretend like it's like holy, co like dear God, this this stuff is ridiculous. Uh, exactly. Uh, um, and then when you do, um. <laughs> De uh, mushrooms uh, you, you, you don't this is stuff that takes you you don't take it like you're you'll look outside of the, uh, you'll look up to the to the evergreen tree and you'll see a little gnome who's who's staring at you and who's who's egging you on who's who's going like hey and I'm like dude I'm with my friend I'm like that's there's a there's a gnome outside there's an elf that just like said what's up and and like you'll you'll meet like a, a I seen like crystalline foxes made of jewels who who wow. like s smiled at me and like told me everything's all right. Okay, seen, so like, can your friends see the same thing you're seeing because those things are actually there, or is it just the particular thing that you're experiencing and your friends seeing something totally? Oh no, different? no, this no, no, those. See, this is a play. Like if you take three rips of dimethyltryptamine (DMT), you will go to a void or some you'll break on through to the other side as mm -hmm. Jim Morrison mm -hmm. called it uh because he did it too he did peyote I mean I guess too so he, it's, he, he, he did them all he was he was influenced yeah, I'm sure by, uh, he did it all <laughs> <laughs> hey you're Jim Morrison you might as well right what, what what uh what sign are you I am Aquarius what are you okay I'm a Virgo oh okay Go so so are you is that a water Obviously. Uh, I think it's an air sign, although it air shows water, somebody pouring water on okay. it's the sign of spreading oh, the information okay. yeah. everywhere. Okay. Which ah, I guess is what cool. I'm doing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I love astrology. So, like I I I've I've been uh Santos Benacci is 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 is, is, uh, is freaking 
with so yeah. many levels of above and beyond people when it comes to the astro theology stuff. Yeah, Mr. Astro Theology is his channel, and I've interviewed him on this show too. So many yes, people. Yes, I, I watched that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he is very um, interesting. Astrology is interesting, and, and on a flat earth, it, it works even better. For, I've heard from people who are knowledgeable about that sort of thing. And so, also, to finish off my point now, is when you do the DMT, it's, it's frightening too. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's so frightening where I remember take, I mean, I can, I, like I told you, I am going to make videos and I'm going to try to put it all together and make sense of it. And I might even try to talk about it on stage, just like, and, and bring the flat earth to the stage, uh, comedy stage, just like uh, Matt Powerland did. Speaking of Powerland. You've been on stage before too. Yeah. Need to talk Spe to speaking of Powerland, uh, you must, it's a good idea to support other flat earthers, just like I support your show and. Obviously, you support my measly little channel. I support, it's not a measly uh, little channel. <laughs> I support other uh, flat earthers. Uh, Everybody you know. who started a channel on YouTube started with one subscriber. Yes. Just, you know, we're all the same. We just are on different growth levels. And, you know, hey, that's, it's, it's all the same, really. Unless there's people that act that, as if that's not the case. But, you know, the reality is, is that we're all the same. You know, so, sub genius members fight amongst themselves the same same way that a flat earthers fight amongst themselves. Oh, really? I guess that may, yeah. might just be the human condition, unfortunately. Yeah. There's, there's some sub genius members that try to. Uh, um, it's called, um, uh, like rooting out. Like what's that called? Smoking, put light in the fire, and getting the smoking them out. Oh, um, I see. Smoking out like bad <laughs> members of the subject yeah, community. Exactly. We call it. We call them false prophets. Like this dude on YouTube the other day, he was calling me a, a false prophet, and I'm well, like, dude, I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, how much money have you given Bob? Because <laughs> if you haven't given money to Bob, you're just a normal mediocre and pink boy, and Bob frowns upon you, and you're calling me a pretender, and. That doesn't make any sense. You're the one reading stuff online about the subgenius while I'm the, a paying official member. So well, It's like the whole shill meme within Flat Earth with people calling each other shills, you know, drawing a gun, you're a shill, and the other person's yeah, drawing a I'm gun, you're a shill, and uh, that sort of thing. Um, it's, it's all well and fine to call people shills until one day you're called a shill, and then you say to yourself, oh, yeah. wait, I'm not a shill, but... But 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 people are calling me one, and that might mean those other people I've called a show might not be shills too. So I've been called a shill. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's like government okay. agent shill. I've obviously yeah. seen that you have, and I've seen oh, on your yeah. on, on your last show. Um, uh, what you say? Some, your last question was, "Hey Patricia, are you a reptilian?" I, exactly. So, I've, yeah, <laughs> several videos were made about that, but you know, people can say whatever oh, they wish. It doesn't bother me. It's more like the, It's more that it's amusing. Dude. People, my friends, so that's like, oh, and that's that was another thing too. Um, uh, what's his face? I'm sure. He, have you heard of Ru Rupert's uh, podcast show? Rupert's? No, hey, tell me. Hi, hello, uh, I think it's called Hi, it's Rupert, or hello, I think it's Hi, it's Rupert. No, he, is it good? What's it about? Yeah, yeah it's great. He, he he's interviewed uh, Santos Benache. He 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 does uh, he does a uh, pretty much the flat Earth and other hot potatoes thing. It's pretty it's pretty much the same. Does thing, it do so. flat Earth? He he did, but he, yeah, he made fun of me um, like seven months ago when it was his very first like uh, tryout, uh, his very first like tryout live hangout mm -hmm. thing, and mm -hmm. and I was in the chat because uh, because I've known him for years, yeah, and uh, just like I've known Santos for like years be before him, and I've I've, I've known I mean, Santos and I were friends on Facebook in like 2010. Mm. And then it's weird because we bef we uh, he defriended me for some odd reason, and then we we befriended each other again this past uh, two years, and it's 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 funny. It's, you thought it, you were a shell, probably. I, I don't I don't know, but uh, it's just it's it's, it's um. So wait, what were we talking about? <laughs> I don't even know what we were talking about. DMT is where oh, we left off. I was going to ask you about ayahuasca. I know from what we've talked about previously that that's not something you've done yet. Is it something you want to do? Oh, absolutely. You, but you have to have like, a, you have to know. You don't just want to go to some, because now it's becoming super trendy to, to go to some American resort and do ayahuasca with, with mm -hmm. some fake shaman and, and shit your brains out. And you know, I, I, <laughs> who the heck knows? Uh, but you have to like know the correct people you have to know like there's bad shamans like there's evil shamans people 
who will yeah, and there's psychic darts at people who like you'll be uh, you'll be under the influence of ayahuasca. You'll look around. I've I've heard stories that that the the dude t who was under the influence of ayahuasca he could see that his wife was cheating on him with one of the other people in the group, and so he had like a fucking complete uh, breakdown episode. Because yeah, ah, that, that sounds horribly miserable. Yeah, that, that would be uncool if you went with your wife and found out she was doing that. So like you want to have like when I went to Eslon, I. Uh, I, yes, I wanted to heal. Uh, w when I went there, I, it was actually on my brother's birthday, um, June 10th, and I did not ex uh, plan that too correctly. I, I, maybe I did unconsciously or something. Mm, that makes but sense. But I, I, I had a fuck. I had a break. It's called a panic attack, a break of a, a, a glimpse of psychosis. Uh, what do you call? Mm. It? But w what's it called? Um, psychopathy or what uh, Mark Passio ca uh, calls it. Mm -hmm. um, but the people at Esalon, you're allowed to have mental breakdowns. They call it a breakthrough hmm. be be because like our society doesn't let us heal. Our institutions, we go there and we go, what is that one called? What's that one song, song called? Like, oh, we got to keep them sedated. What's that called? We gotta keep them sedated or something like that. Nah, I, I think that's you gotta keep them separated. But no, no, use no, the words <laughs> sedated. No, what, what's that one song? Uh, uh, yeah, there is a song from the '80s about that, but I can't remember what it is right yeah, now. Whatever, and there's probably many other songs too. Keep them sedated is is what mm -hmm. they do. They keep us sedated. They don't cure us. They treat us. Mm, and, very true. And they don't allow us to heal. That they, they, all they do is give us pills and tell us to lay down. And and if we don't lay down, they'll strap us down forcefully, and then and they'll inject you with really hard drugs. Now, I I haven't been, I've never been in a mental institution, but I've had plenty of friends that have uh, been in a mental institutions. So that's I know their experience. I know they I know their experiences uh, from what they told me. It's like it's what's that watching that one movie, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest with Jack Nicholson. That's what I always think of when I think of mental institutions. It is. Those it, images. It, it, is it is that. Really? Okay. Yeah, it, it's that. And uh, well, when you had your breakthrough at the Esalen Institute it was in incredible. Big Sur, California, it was, it was an out of body experience. But you weren't strapped down. You were allowed was, to just be you. No, right? I, um, I wasn't strapped down. No, but I was drugged by a lady there. Really. That yeah. sounds frightening. No, it was horribly frightening. Yeah, I uh, I was there for, like I said, uh, a week. Well, it seems like and the Esalen Institute, if they're drugging you, you know, with pharmaceuticals, that they're no better than just... No, 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 it was my own fault. <laughs> no, no, no. No, okay. no, no, it was, it was my fault. I, 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 when, I, when I went up there, I, I actually had... Um, well, I might as well. I, I had... Well, I'm not going to say that. Um, oh, now I the whole audience is like... Tell us. <laughs> I, I, I could have brought stuff up to uh, Esalen, if, but I wasn't uh, aware of it, so I just followed the rules. I didn't realize they were hip, to, still hip to that sort of thing when, when I went up there. And so um, when, I, when I went out there, I, it's a complete detox. You're eating complete 100% organic uh, food, and, mm -hmm. and you have the choice to be vegan if, uh, uh, vegan if you want. Okay. And uh, oh yeah, it's amazing. All their stuff is uh, is farm. We it's all organic and farm farm raised. We grow it ourselves. I was the one there, uh, growing, uh, se seeding the next crops for the next season. So it's a self contained community. Everything yes. that they have there it's is about is two hundred people max, right. and they keep cycling in hundreds of people per month. Or, or and it's not or, cheap either. Oh God, no, it's not cheap. Be no. involved in this. Yeah. It's at least uh, five hundred to twelve hundred dollars. Mm. Now, what about belief systems and religion and that sort of thing within the Esalen Institute? Oh, they're totally neutral. Well, that's good. That's Just good. like how I am. Do celebrities check in? Is it one oh, of those yes. places oh, where people oh, detox? Yes. El Ellen DeGeneres, o Oprah, all the all the uh, um, like Andy Kaufman. Oh, really? Yep. Um, well, um, there was a show, oh, I can't remember the show, a, a famous show that was on television just finished its season finale. It would make sense if I knew uh, the <laughs> show. but it, I'm still trying to think of the sedated song, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll come up with it. Dang it, we'll, we'll get that. Somebody will do that. 
Um, thinking the Ramones, it's just my mind is blanking. It probably right is. Now. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a mainstream. I want to uh, be sedated. That yes, one? that's what okay. it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. So when you're uh when you're under the influence of of uh, DMT under the third hit, um all of a sudden you're you're floating above yourself and you're aware like i remember i remember uh like i was i, I looked over into the mirror there was a mirror right next to me and so I, I looked over and i see my face and i was like wow i was like what uh a, a beautiful but horribly terrifying creature i am uh, st staring at myself in the mirror and then all of a sudden, I like I started hyperventilating and getting in touch with my anger. I was sitting on like a meditation pillow, and I was trying to honestly meditate and be calm. And and all of a sudden, pure rage and anger took over, and I was like hyperventilating, like <gasps> like looking at myself in the mirror, like holy crap! And, but then all of a sudden, I looked back into the mirror. While this was going on, it all like completely went away. And I when I smiled. I smiled and all of a sudden I was just like, why, why am, and then I'm just like, all of a sudden, like something just tells you to relax, relax, dude, relax. You got nothing to worry about. You don't know enough to worry. That could be the quote of the show for all of us. Relax. That's, Quit uh, worrying about things. Terrence we don't McKenna know said. enough to worry. And is it that's from Ter that's, Terrence McKenna? That's Terrence McKenna. You don't, uh, well, relax, <laughs> me, but you don't know enough worry. You don't know enough to worry is, uh, is <sighs> actually, that's not Terrence McKenna. That's actually what um, the mushroom entity said to him. Said, you don't know enough. You don't know enough to worry. Whew. That's f powerful stuff. <laughs> yes. And, and it you could, also, without even doing mushrooms, just think that to yourself when you get in a stressful situation. Exactly. When I, when I study Terrence McKenna, I, 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 like, I realize that these entities that you meet, and they're similar, the mushroom entity and the DMT entities, they're similar. They're like cousins with one another. Um, they'll, they like try to get you to be like them. That's if you study Terrence McKenna, just listen to him. He sounds like a fucking elf from a different dimension. <laughs> um, but Robert Anton Wilson, in his books, he talks about the he one of the main characters in his books was was being was uh, being subverted by an uh, a spy who actually was talking about the flat Earth theory in the books that I was reading. So he's and like, when were those books written? It was oh, it was, it was written in early seventies, mid seventies. Wow, this this flat Earth stuff's been all around us all this oh, time. Oh yeah, Robert Anton Wilson and Terrence McKenna uh, talked about it too. Actually, I just listened this past week at the very end of Terrence McKenna's uh, one of his lectures, newer ones I listened to. One of his uh, um, audience members is asking him. He'd be like, the audience member goes, "It's like the audience member didn't agree with what Terrence uh, said," and uh, he's like. He's like, yeah, I just don't see like how you're gonna get across to millions of people, you know? Like, how are you gonna get people if if we can if we're in the audience and we can barely buy it? How are you gonna get the regular people to buy it? And then the the audience member said, it'd be like it's like those flat Earth theorists. And mm -hmm. I was like, what? <laughs> uh, 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 he's like, it's like they, like they they there's still these people, and this was probably in like the early '90s. And uh, it's like, like these people really think that they're they can get people. Uh, and Terrence hates uh, conspiracy theories. Robert Anton Wilson loves conspiracy theories. Terrence McKenna hates them. So it's so. Why does, ter why does Terrence hate them if he's into exploring things and deep because thoughts? He's, because he's he's he, like he's he's it's beyond it. Yes, he's so beyond it. It's it doesn't like he's met reptilians and insectoids and. Just uh, uh, and I, we can get into that since yeah, we already. I want to, especially since I, people, a couple people, two people have said I'm a reptilian, but they're they think anyone's a reptilian. So ridiculous. I've never actually seen a reptilian. Anybody do reptilian ish things in I their have. life? You have. Oh yes. Oh, so yes. you believe? Well, that's not that, that I believe. This exists. That I have experience with. Oh, with well, yeah, okay. And, and, and because... from different and from different people. Not just one, one, not just one person. So well, how do you know when you meet somebody, or even when you see somebody, that that's us. the case? Well, first off, I I don't uh, I don't go around going, hey, 
oh my god, Patricia's eyes right now. I see. I'm shape shifting. <laughs> <laughs> like I, honestly, I I I see people's physiology change all the time. They're people uh, blink weirdly when I watch some of my videos back. My my eyes Sorry. get crooked. My eyes go crooked sometimes. Oh my god, I have proof I'm a shapeshifter. I my oh, eyes went cro crooked for a second. Especially um, the way uh, if you're watching a YouTube video and then you pause it, you can pause somebody making the because we blink and we move and we look normal, but when yeah. we pause, we have like one eye half closed and we look like monsters. That's why even professional models they take a hundred shots to get the one that's on the cover because you can make awkward positions when it's frozen for a moment exactly. in time. But that doesn't mean they're reptiles. It just means um, that they're humans. <laughs> I just dropped something on the floor, which I'm going to pick up, which is my glasses. So excuse me. What yeah. are you drinking now? Water as well? Yeah, just water. I'm not like Matt Moylan. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, I'm just busting his balls. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, I'm sure he would appreciate that. <laughs> um, now, uh, to get back on track, uh, ayahuasca different now do you believe in that ayahuasca you were saying that in dmt and with uh, mushrooms you see different entities and then when you take ayahuasca which you haven't yet that there's an, a third type of entity but they're all well, sort of related well ayahuasca is is more of the mother earth energy it's more mm. of a f feminine forgiving mother ayahuasca yeah yeah it's it's was it um i can't remember the, the vine of the gods the flesh mm. of I think that might that's might be it. Don't quote me on it. But uh, I, like I said, I've never done that. DMT is more like a hyper futuristic, and to quote uh, Terrence McKenna again, um, self dribbling jeweled basketballs. Oh, self trans self dribbling electric elf entities. Like these things are like transforming elf machines. That are made of language. <laughs> and they, Whoa. They, I think I'd have to be drunk to be able to understand what you just well, said. Let me, give, let me give you a quick example. Let me give you a quick yeah. example. When I was completely taken under and 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 completely in their world, all of a sudden I would I couldn't couldn't feel my leg. I, like I would try to move my toes and I couldn't feel my toes anymore. I had uh, the bowl and the lighter in my hand still, and I went like this. Get it in there. I went. The lighter and the bowl were in my hands. I I turned them over and I tried to let go of it, and they were stuck to my to my hands. I was like, I was like, ugh, it wouldn't get off of me. And then, uh, but see, that defies logic. Like we now, I couldn't do that with my cell phone; it would fall on the floor. So, do you believe you were seeing that happen, or it oh, really God, was no, happening? No, no, I was just in their territory. That's where. You, so physics, your body was sitting. Physics doesn't matter there. There's no. That's a joke there. But yeah, but it, I, I know what you're saying. But I mean, the laws of physics don't work where, where it, it doesn't right. work where they, where where they but are. You're yeah. still you. Your body is still your body. You don't transform, although you can see your veins and what's going on inside. Well, yeah, yeah, you don't. You're conscious of your body. Although mm -hmm. I remember certain times where I was like weeping uncontrollably, like crying, saying thank you, like oh thank you, thank you for this. <laughs> I love you. I love you so much. And uh, all of a sudden, I was like on the ground, like uh, like ten feet away, like in a fetal position. Pretty sure I was crying. And then all of a sudden, like you, your fingers snap, and you're back on the bed under the uh, on the blankets. And I remember these like oh, see, I'll give you a quick example of what these what their type of humor is. And this is my my own personal example. It's not something from Terrence McKenna. It's I, these. There was like four or five of these uh, elf electricity uh beings entities and they were coming out of the blanket that i was uh covered in they were jumping out of the squares of the blanket that i and they were whispering shit the, the they were whispering the stuff that i was thinking about so i was thinking about time in my life and i was about to go on a, a stage the next day and perform comedy at, at a comedy club here in buffalo and i was thinking about that on what i was going to say on stage and so these elf entities picked up on it and they're like He's, he's thinking. He's thinking about his life. He's thinking about his life. And then, and then, uh, and then I started to think about like shit I was scared of. And then, so then, all of the stuff that I was most scared of, ways of uh, getting murdered, like mm -hmm. uh, all of those things came true. They they showed me 
me getting murdered in my most, I don't even want to say them because they're so awful, getting crushed, yeah. bent in half, like from the completely in, it's breaking your spine, you get like having a hand come come over your, your shoulder and all of a sudden a knife just stabbing multiple times into your gut. And By the way, I anybody never, who's never done DMT is now listening to this thing, saying to I'm themselves, good. I, I will never do DMT after hearing but, this. And I remember, I remember getting stabbed in the gut and I remember mm -hmm. it was, I, I, I was like, I didn't even care. I go, I was, I released it. It was a, is it basically ego death? And you're just like, oh, I don't care. Go ahead. So then, I didn't. Death was, death was, didn't matter anymore. But then all of a sudden, um, I thought of, I was thinking about my life and stuff, and uh, no, no time. How old I'm gonna live? Mm -hmm. And I remember, and they, and and I remember, uh, they go, they go, you are time. They said that to me. They go, they're like, he's thinking about his life. He's thinking about time. And then they, like, one of them came right. They're like, you are time. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's a, that, that's a quote that one a DMT thing, uh, entity said to me. That, that, you can quote that thing. <laughs> Interesting. Now, before oh, we were talking yeah. about, oh, uh, we were talking about reptilians and we got lost in oh, our uh, yeah. conversation. And you were saying that you had actually known people that you've seen yeah. change. Yeah. The, the reason I, the reason it gets so convoluted to, because like uh, we're talking about that there's entities when you're in the DMT and then when you're in, uh, when you're in the psilocybin experience, I was with my good friend, uh, Brent, and we both took a pretty high uh, dosage, not as much as you're, you're supposed to take. The, p the reason people have bad trips is because they take too little too often. Mm. And, and so you're supposed to take high, doses rarely interesting <laughs> so, so if you just oh yeah i've done mushrooms oh yeah like i've done a good amount of stuff i'm not and i'm still a newbie i'm very mm -hmm. for most people i'm ex extremely experienced but from my perspective i know the people i listen to it's ridiculous it's it's absolutely ridiculous but uh so when i was with uh well i oh, god damn it I, I, <laughs> no you're doing great <laughs> I know, like I was following you. I, I was contacted by a supposed reptilian via Skype. Wait, and so there's people who just say, "Hey, I'm a reptilian," and then just send you a Skype request. There, there was a guy. Who, I'm a reptilian. <laughs> there, there, there was a. Uh, do you know? Do you ever hear of the Galactic Federation of Light? I think so. Yes, I think so. I don't know how, but there, it sounds familiar. There. Yeah, there, you can look that up, and I'm, there's it's been around for a hundred years. The beast, um, like what's her face, M. P. Blavatsky, Madame Blavatsky, uh, one of the first woman occultists, uh, was writing about the Galactic Federation of Light a long time ago, and she was the one who wrote the Secret Doctrine. If anyone's just interested in looking that up, who's interested in very old uh, <laughs> occultism, um, but. Uh, um, my friend, uh, what were we talking about? My friend uh, Brent and mushrooms. Yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, reptilians, so, I think, is somehow tied in. Yeah. So, so he. Oh, yeah, and that guy. See, that's the thing. Like, okay, I'll talk about that guy then first. The real. So uh, this dude on Facebook about wow, uh, two thousand eight ish. Um, he contacted me on Facebook, and it and it said his name was Salil Razdan. I don't care. I don't care if his Salil Razdan, Razdan. Pretty interesting too. Um, yeah, I'll get I'll get into that. Um, so he's supposedly from the Galactic Federation of Light, and I've already known about the Galactic Federation of Light and reptilians before this guy a little bit, very 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 little bit. And um, so this dude gets a hold of me uh, via Facebook. I accept his friend request. We get a hold of each other via Skype, and this dude had me convinced that he was even a level above reptilian. Do you, you know? Do you ever hear of the level above the reptilians? No. <laughs> the it's rep like masonry. It's like above thirty-three. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The reptilians are the low, the low, the low class. The, mm -hmm. the not the, the non-royal bloodlines. The royal bloodlines of the red reptilians are called the draconians. Oh, I've heard of that, these names before. Draconians mm -hmm. is well, dragon, dragon, mm -hmm. draconians. These are literal beings that can shape shift into. Two, two ton giant dragons apparently 
And, and uh, <laughs> you know, I, I say this because it probably existed at one point, one, one point in, in some civilization, just like unicorns and like, to me, fairies and elves exist because I've seen them. You've seen them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I haven't, I've seen little gnome things. So gnomes could be real. Uh, I've seen gray hybrid alien things in my dreams when I was sleeping so that I, I know what the difference is. I'm not just like uh, making up stuff. Um, so you have this guy and I, and I talked, I, I talked to this dude uh, via Skype for a year and I was convinced that, um, that he, he was not screwing with me. He, the reason why is because he knew so much, knew so much. His knowledge was ridiculous. He blow my mind all the time. And I would just be talking to him and I would keep it a secret from most, most people. <laughs> and, uh, but then, uh, my friends in New York, I'd be like, yeah, I'm talking to this supposed draconian reptilian thing. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you want proof? And so my, my, one of my girlfriends, uh, uh Danielle, she, 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 uh, gets a hold of them and she, she contacts me back immediately and, and says, holy crap, this dude was telling uh, answering my questions before that I, I can answer them. Interesting. So draconians use Skype. You'd think they'd be using something <laughs> more advanced <laughs> you, than you that. Think, you know, <laughs> underground well, bunkers and Skype. I know like, the um, Galactic Federation of Light supposedly has quarantined Earth. That's all I really know about it. Uh, to because there's dark forces. Um, so that could work on a flat Earth. That could work in the on the ball Earth model. Hey, you know. Uh, I can literally talk about the, this dude for an hour straight about how he ch how he tricked me into thinking the world was going to explode and then how I challenged him and called him a pathetic liar and that why you go around tricking people like this and um, and then actually he didn't tell me that he was this like it's not just that like he told oh I'm a reptilian or I'm a draconian I had to guess it I didn't know it so this dude told me that the world was about to explode all of a sudden, Jurassic Park style. He just lays a bombshell on me. Well, the world's about to, uh, everyone's about to, I'm like, dude, I'm like, I'm in San Diego relaxing. Screw you, dude. F you. What the hell are you talking? I was scared for a millisecond. I was frightened to death. Uh, like, it was like, here. Um, but then I'm just like, no, that's the reason I'm, a, the, re the reason I'm here is to prevent that. I'm, you're a liar. You're a fraud. You're a joke. Uh, I like so then, how you said your reason you're here. Your reason is to prevent that. That's all yeah. of our reasons, I think, to be here. Maybe not specifically preventing the world from exploding, but yeah. on, on, on varying levels. Yeah, to metaphors. Create, I would say. To create good, to to do something positive. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit, small, little small mm -hmm. steps. Ba baby steps lead some really <laughs> good places. Um, so so I uh, so I. So I, for like a week, I didn't, we talked a lot. And for like a week, I didn't talk to this guy. For a week straight, I didn't speak to him. And I, coincidentally, I did, uh, I was doing research on reptilians and draconians that entire week of not talking to him. And so he Skyped me again and I hear, do 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 the little Skype uh, thing. Mm -hmm. I, and I didn't, I didn't even want to talk to him. And so, uh, cause he tried to call me for a while and I ignored him. And then, uh, so, so then I, I answered it and I'm like, and I was just going to bombard him. I'm like, yo, what was going on? Why did you contact me? Why are you talking to me? Why did you say, what do you, what is the Galactic Federation? Like, what do you, what is going on here? And, uh, he's, and right before I even could say that, he goes, he's like, now listen, listen, Dan, before you say that, I just want to know why. And I'm like, what? I'm like, why, why, what? He's like, why do you have to come at me? You're about to come at me with questions and with ferocity. He's like, why are you going to do that? And that completely threw me off. So I was staring at him like, oh, God, now I'm all confused again. And then, uh, so he goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, if you can guess what I am, I'll tell you. And I go, okay. A human? <laughs> That's what I would have said. Could you see him while he said this on Skype? Yeah, I know. yeah, we're, we're, yeah. He he was he's a um, he's an uh, an Indian. He's a like from India. Okay, got it. From 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 New Delhi, India, actually, mm -hmm. and that's, that's a UFO hotspot. If you know anything about UFO hotspots, mm. and um, yeah, New Delhi, India, is tons of uh, video footage of of UFO sightings, and um, 
So that's pretty interesting. A, a fella from New Delhi, India, and he literally like this is a guy who he's literally an Indian version of me. Like he he he's me except he's he looks like me except he's an Indian, a little bit. He's probably a little bit bulker. But he put on some a uh, little bit bulk uh, at the end of. But um, so I go okay. So I was silent for three to four minutes, hmm. and then I thought about the what I've been researching, and all of a sudden I said his name out loud. I go. Salil Razdan. I go, Salil Razdan. I go, Razdan. I go, Dragon. I go, Dragon. Dude, you're a dragon, dude. Draconian. I've been researching this shit all week. And he's like, he was, he looked, uh, he didn't say anything. And he looked kind of shocked. Almost, not, 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 uh, he didn't like shocked, but like almost happy that I, that I, that I figured, that I discovered it, that I, that I figured it out myself. Like pleased almost. And, uh, so I don't know. Honestly, he's he's tried to contact me this past uh, year, and I've ignored ninety nine percent of everything he he says. How could care. you go from the name Razdan to Dragon? What was the thing that made you know that that word meant well, Dragon? Well, he, he told me if I guessed correctly, uh, then he would tell me. So I I got I was quiet, sat and was was quiet, and I just I was silent. Intuited and it. Suddenly, it. suddenly, it just came to me. But that, so, yeah, so I don't talk to him anymore. I don't want anything to do with what's him. What's he contacting you to talk about? This? Him being draconian slash reptilian? Well, or uh, the world blowing up? Or No, no. He, 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 just, he was really into basically exposing the world corruption. I wonder if he's a flat earther now. I don't know. I, I'd like mm -hmm. to talk. I, now I actually, I don't, like I, like I said, I had, I had no interest. I just gave up in, in interest in talking to him. I'm like, I don't want to. Like I, I confronted him uh, like a year and a half ago, and I'm like, dude, I'm like, you told me you're a draconian, uh, you told me the world was an explode, man. I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to talk, I don't want to talk to be liars and BSers anymore. I'm done, I'm done with that. I get a lot of Skype requests and emails and such with people claiming all sorts of things. Exactly. And I often say to myself, I could engage in a conversation with these people. They're perfectly fine people, I'm sure, and they might teach me something, and it would it would benefit my life, and then I could talk about it here and benefit others with it. And then I think many of them seem like charlatans, scam artists, people with uh, ego, personal ego issues that have to pretend to be fill in the blank thing uh, to uh, yeah. make themselves feel better about their life, which isn't what they wish it could be. Um, so it's just a judgment call. So oftentimes I just say no to those kind of conversations. Maybe yeah. I'm missing out on some great people, but I'd rather not. I think engage. that too. I, uh, I think maybe I am missing. I'm like, who? maybe this dude is from the galactic. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's like uh, the return of Jesus Christ. Uh, you would, if somebody came up to you and said, I'm Jesus, you just will probably Never laugh. Never Either. But you know, there's, there's an infamous YouTuber who claims so, and you have to say to yourself, 100%, no, that's impossible. Then there's that <laughs> light, light part of you that's like, well, what if? I mean, of course, that wouldn't be how he would come back, and that's not what Jesus would do. But someday, if that does occur, will we just not add him on Skype? And boy, there we go, <laughs> our chance to talk to no. Jesus. <laughs> Um, oh, so to, to, to finish off the reptilian thought, when I was uh, in, in the, in the not that one, not, not, not Salil Razdan, to, to go back to the psilocybin mushrooms, when I was in the car with my, with my buddy Brent, I was heavily, uh, like, I was telepathic. I, he, he, he couldn't even look at me in the eyes. He, he, would, uh, he, he couldn't look at me uh, he, um, because I could read all his thoughts. Um, he, anything that he was even about to say or think of, I already knew it. I, I'm like, and it, he was, he was so angry that he didn't have that ability with me. Like mm. he, he could, I, I, he couldn't think what I was about to say, but only, only I could. Uh, and, and so I look, I remember at one point uh, I looked over to the side, like I told you, there was a little gnome in the trees in the evergreen trees. And then I, just real quick, I tried to look away. Cause I was like, what the heck was that? I tried to look away. And all of a sudden, there's a there's a a little like shadowy entity over like sitting on the steering wheel where he is because we were inside of a car out in uh, his in his driveway, and um, so then I, I I see it there and I look away on the dashboard and it's right in front of me on the dashboard and it's getting smaller, 
it's, so it's becoming small. And then, and then I look down at the seatbelt to try to just look into a dark shadow, and it's right there. And then I try to look straight forward at, towards the garage out the window, and it's standing on my nose. So then I, so then I look over to, uh, towards him, and he's being sucked into a portal inside of his steering wheel, like like ah, like 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 tr he's he literally looks like uh, the T one thousand Mercury being that's made of mer uh, silver mercury, getting sucked into a d black hole dimension into his um, steering wheel, and he, I can see him struggling with the reptilian shape shift. He's shape shifting. His face is holographic. He's struggling, like, Bruh! like there's a reptilian breaking out of his human form. And I'm looking, I'm like, holy shit. And then it, it just stopped. He like won, he won whatever the struggle was, whatever he was doing. We were time traveling and we came back. We felt like we split apart millions of uh, years apart. And then we came back together and, we're, and we were like, yeah, dude, we made it. The world's going to be all right. So did he have those experiences of being sucked in or was that just what you were perceiving? No, I uh, I experienced uh, that from him. He 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 experienced it different. He he la he laughs. He loves hearing the stories. He yeah. loves uh, he, he, you know, tell him about the time that uh, but, right right. But like, but we, he probably we, saw you do all sorts of crazy stuff that yeah, you didn't. Like, yeah, like we were we were like just when we opened up the door, like I I, I could I could make this uh the it was nighttime. I can make the, the and there was cars uh, on the street uh, passing us like headlights. I can make the headlights, the cars that already passed us. I can make them go go back. I can, the cars would pass us, and I'd reverse time, and they, they would go, and then they would go back. The moon was uh, going above us, and I reversed it and turned it turned it to, to daytime. I made the I uh, when I opened up the doors to go to the bathroom, which I have to do now. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, because uh, you've been drinking. <laughs> I. Uh, like there's like a tornado, a hurricanes, and we're like, it's 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 a it's experience, man. It's like, and and still, I've never d taken the heroic dose. Uh, the heroic dose is five dried grams in silent dark. And that's darkness. what we're talking about, mushroom. Okay, mushroom. That that's that's five dried grams in silent darkness, and that's mm. what that's what Terrence McKenna and Bill Hicks call the heroic dose. Mm, interesting. Well, I'm going to uh, talk to you just for a few moments more because our show's coming to a close. But I do oh, want to ask you about comedy, so you can uh, use the use the bathroom. <laughs> um, comedy, you're on stage. You do comedy. Uh, well, I have York, I have two years. Are you going to be doing it again? Oh, I I love to. I I I go see all the uh, most famous comedians in the world and the most uh, people that have influence on me, like uh, Dave Chappelle and. Mm -hmm. Russell Brand, and I just saw Jerry Seinfeld recently. Um, Bill Burr, I saw. I saw. Um, uh, there's there's tons. So I, I want to see. I still want to see um, a whole bunch of comedians. Um, and I just want to like Louis C.K., fellow redhead. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so I just want. I just. Uh, I'm more of a comedy scout. Like I just. I'm. I. Uh, but I, I'll get back on stage. The last time I was on stage was in Buffalo at Nietzsche's, and I was kicked off stage uh, by the bartenders and the bouncer. Really? Why? <laughs> what were you doing wrong? Oh, because I was just making—I made fun of. Uh, it was in 2012. Wow! So it's been wow. It's it's been freaking four years. Mm. I um, like Stephen Wright as a comedian goes, oh, and I, I like Stephen the other Wright. people that you've mentioned as well. So. Very dry. Yeah, I like that. Love it. The kind of uh, um, things he says just make you—I don't know what that. The, well, dry humor. You know what that does to you. Yeah, George Carlin supported um, sub geniuses. Really? Yeah. Well, make, that makes complete and total sense. Uh, Robert Anton Wilson had a, a big influence on George Carlin. Well, let's close a little bit by talking about, unless we've missed something, we, I, we've talked about everything that oh, I was no, expecting was, we'd talk it about. Fun. It's been so fun. Uh, about the flat earth in general and what kind of videos are you thinking of doing? I know you, uh, just oh, being something. a Facebook friend, you, you, one of your hobbies is you like, you like professional basketball, you like Kobe. Uh, so that's an aspect of you. I kind of wanted to let people know about you, that you're not just this person into all this metaphysical stuff. You also like normal stuff like professional <laughs> basketball <laughs> yeah like so. playing basketball like book collecting um but like you said i'm gonna make um some videos my next uh videos it's gonna be about um like nobody knows what air or water is mm. nobody knows what air is by itself nobody knows what water is by itself these are 
these are entities by themselves, individual entities. Well, science will be able to tell you the the chemical breakdown of what air. Oh and yeah, water are, they but... got it. They got a hundred percent correct. They know everything about the air inside, yeah. air and water. <laughs> Nothing more to be discovered about air and water, even though we'll be we'll be. Uh, ha um, driving in cars that are hydrogen based and uh, uh, going over bridges that are made of water in a, in a couple of decades. But um, well, we'll also be living on Mars by then too, right? Oh God, no. <laughs> well, there'll, there'll be there will be people that uh, will believe that we are on Mars because oh, yeah, there's will. people that believe there's a rover on there now. So oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> oh, that's just too funny. So um, yeah. So the next uh, another video is. Um, uh, reality television shows like mm -hmm. I'm sure we've we've all watched them. Oh yeah, um, and it should uh, be a flat Earth reality television show. That would yeah, be pretty so fun. It sh it should be called the United Nations reality television show, and um, they should have uh, cameras in there, like real t uh, like uh, real world, and uh, and they should have tons of cameras infiltrate the U United Nations. Uh, 24 seven, just like the uh, news and actually have the world leaders go there, have conversations and solve things and solve issues, you know, like they're supposed something. to. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just an idea. I don't know. What a crazy concept that would be. A, <laughs> wouldn't that get good ratings? You think? Well, it would probably be incredibly boring. No, I, there'd be edits. They'd be like, Oh, uh, here comes this law. And then they'd be like, Oh, there's an edit. Oh, I swear <laughs> it was martial law. It's not going to be declared. But yeah, no, exactly. Uh, yeah. But the idea of not. having government have a camera on them 24 hours a day with everything they say and everything they do in some way, although it's very big brother, we might be able to circumvent all the issues that happen. But then again, who wants anyone to spy on the government? Because if we do that, then they well, they already spy on us. But no, let's spy it on can't them. Be, it can't be good for some people and not good for others. So we have to all have nobody spying on us, in my opinion. Be free. Yeah, that's I like I like that idea better actually. <laughs> well, I have enjoyed talking to you tremendously. It's been so much fun. It's been so everything I expected and more. And is there anything that I've not touched on that you want to get across? Or I'm sure there will be when we both turn our microphones off. But uh, yeah, um, no, it was super fun. I, again, I want to thank you uh, for having me on and inviting me on. Uh, say. Um, Love ye one another a little bit more. Let's try to be uh, a little f more uh, f friendly towards one another. Uh, I know we all get angry because I certainly get angry. I'm living with my parents now, but I I will be getting out of here within two to three weeks. And uh, so, mind your anger. Become a little more alert and aware. Uh, get in touch of that childlike spark that we all have. And since we we all know that and we all have that and in and, and we we get to the flat earth and then it's all like stripped away from us and then we all of a sudden we're like children again and then but this time now we're children with our we got our slack back and this time we're more alert and aware and they will never let them take it away from us ever again dan that's a great way to close the show thank you so much thank you Dan Falkenbach is his name, F-A-L-K-E-N-B-A-C-H. That's the name that he has, and it's the name of his channel as well. What are you showing us there? Oh, just a little maps real quick. The, oh, that's the doctor's, uh, that's the uh, Professor Ferguson's map. Interestingly enough, uh, I don't know what this map, I don't know what that one is, <laughs> but interestingly enough, the Gleason's map, which was made in uh, 1892, was pr published in the Buffalo uh, electrotype and engraving company in Buffalo. Interesting. Isn't probably that, that, that building is probably made of brick, like many buildings there are, and probably still exists. And te if Tesla you could find it. Oh, oh, it's there. Yeah, and, and Tesla was involved uh, with uh, Buffalo and Niagara Falls and the first hydro uh, electric powered thing in the world. So there's so much history here. Buffalo's old. It's mm -hmm. like it's and it's riddled with Freemasonry uh, too, and and all and all the, the architecture and, sh and stuff. You but, should walk uh, yeah. around and make a video, videoing some of that architecture. That would make a cool I, I, video. I should before I get out of here. I will. Yeah, like get a, one of those selfie sticks and then talk about it and walk oh, around. Selfie stick, damn it. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> they would work because you could show things. And All right, and, I guess I'll get a selfie stick. Yeah, I know. It's sort of selling out to get one of those, but you know how it is. Mm -hmm. All right, once again, 
You've been great. It's been fun. And I will see you on Facebook. And to all those listening, thank you. Yeah. Oh, subscribe to Dan Falkenbeck's channel. Most definitely. I already am. And I share his videos on my Facebook and my Twitter and my Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes Facebook. And that concludes an exciting episode number 87 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. And from Dan Falkenbeck and myself, thank you and keep it flat. To the flat, thank you.